Alright guys, Oops. I'm back with another video, and today we're going to answer a, a person's question that they asked on one of my videos, talking about buttons. Um, and they have a really good question, and I thought I could make a video answering this, and that's what I told this person. And uh, we can go over how to set styles for different anim elements in your XAML that you don't have to define each and every time. So, essentially what this person asked, and by the way, I love it when people ask questions on my videos, and then I can go ahead and make videos, you know, delving into those questions and uh, answering them. I think that's really cool. So, feel free to ask your questions uh, as often as you want. There's no stupid questions. Um, there are no stupid questions. My English is poor. And, uh... Yeah, let's get on with it. So, um, this person asked, uh, in essence, is there a way to set up styles for different XAML elements once, and then we don't have to uh, repeat ourselves every single time, right? So, there's this principle in programming you might have heard of before. If not, uh, now's your chance. It's called the dry or don't repeat yourself. Um, essentially, we want to write one bit of code once and reuse that as much as possible instead of rewriting it every single time. So they're wanting to know if there's a way to do that in XAML. Uh, and they were kind of comparing it with CSS, right? So I have a CSS file, and I link that to any HTML page that I want to use that CSS file for. And then I can reference those classes um, in my HTML, and it will use whatever we defined in that class in CSS. If you're familiar with that, if if you're not familiar with CSS, what I said probably doesn't make any sense. But uh, you don't need to know CSS. This has nothing to do with it. They were just um, using that as a, as a comparison. I appreciated that. Uh, but anyway, they were talking about buttons, and we're going to talk about how you can do this with really anything, right? I'm sure they didn't just want to do buttons. Um, they were just giving an example. So what we're going to do is I set up a little bit of uh, something to play with. I don't remember if we had this. Um, no, I don't think we did have this in the, uh, in the last video, but I set a label and I set a button and we're going to define styles in the window. So what we can do is we can do window dot resources and we can open and close that tag. And here we can put different resources, <laughs> I guess, of this window. And inside of that, we can actually have a style tag. And in the style tag, we want a few things. We want this X key, so X colon key, just like X colon name that we talked about before, like down here. Um, this is kind of like our class name. What do we want this to be called? So I'm going to call this uh, my label style or something like that. Okay. And then we also need a target type. We need to define what kind of XAML element are we using this style for? In this case, it is the label. Okay? And inside of it, we just kind of define um, what we want this label to, you know, have property-wise. So we have a setter. So we have a setter, and we can just end it with the slash here. And um, we can set a property. So let's think of a property that I want to change in the label. In this case, let's do font size. Font size is the property. And then the value, let's set it to 30. So what this does, we have a setter. Okay, the setter tag inside of the style. And the setter uh, makes the font size 30. That's all it does. So the property is whatever we want to put in here. So let's say we do font family. That would be the property. But in this case, it's font size. And then the value of that font size is 30. It's just like saying font size is equal to 30. It's the same as that. All right. So get a good look at this. This is what that looks like now. Let's go ahead and let's set the style now in this label. So we do style. Jeez, style, and this is where we kind of use our XAML. I don't know what you call these these curly braces. Maybe you guys know, um, but we do static resource, and you can see it already fills itself. And then we can choose our our class name, so to speak, or our key. Um, in this case, let me go back and show you. 
it's already showing us the available ones we can choose from and we can double click here on label style and now if this refreshes on the left we should be able to see the font size go to 30 and for some reason it is not why is that is it just not rendering <laughs> or am I just doing it wrong okay it looks like okay for some reason it was just taking a while to render uh, on the left hand side but regardless it did change it to the right value we can set multiple setters inside of the same style tag so let's say we also want to uh, let's make the font weight or no property I'm sorry property font weight font weight and the value is going to be equal to bold and let's end that tag and now you can see um, it is bold so if we wanted to we can have another label label right and let's set the content of this label whoops set the content equal to I didn't mean to do the open and close tags this is a lot easier I think um, let's set the content equal to our other label okay and now the style actually I'm just going to copy and paste uh, this line right here so we're going to apply the same style and you can see uh, how easy that was to just add that style to it um, we can add something else let me think of something else we can do with uh, with the label I'm not very familiar with everything we can do with the label maybe is it, uh, is it background and then value let's do aqua what does that look like? Cool. So now <laughs> the label's background is this nice little aqua color. And you can add, like I said, as many of these different setters if as you wanted. Now if we wanted to do something with this button, we can do style and create a new style tag and have its x colon key equal to, let's say, button style. And then target type would just be button, right? Because this one's going to be button exclusive. Okay. And let's think of a setter. Let's make its color something as well. Um, so property, let's do, is it background as well? Okay, background and value is going to be equal to, let's see what, I'm not sure what Azure looks like. It seems, it seems like a, an interesting name so let's make it style static resource and then we already have this pop-up with our IntelliSense here button style and I'm not sure how quickly this is going to render it may already have the color I can't tell yeah it is a different color isn't it it's not very easy to see let's make it something else let's just do like red <laughs> that's a little easier to see than that Azure that Azure looked a lot like just a plain white background so now we have a style that we set with buttons, and like I said, if I wanted to create another button, button, and let's just copy and paste this style for the button that we added to our other one, make our lives easier, um, and let's go ahead and make its content, whoops, not command, let's make its content something as well, content is equal to click me cool and if we wanted to uh, if I want to make this consistent I can make a setter for width equal to 100 with the value of 100 um, I can make horizontal alignment with the value of left and make it consistent with this button that I already defined but I'm lazy and I think you guys hopefully get the point that you can have different styles and setters with properties and values and you can set your styles for different XAML elements uh, and make them consistent.